Um, hello, everyone. Uh, today's lecture will be on uh, voting and elections uh, in the United States. Important thing about American system is that um, administration of elections uh, is a state responsibility. A federal government has kind of limited role uh, in uh, regulating electoral process uh, in this country. An important piece of legislation, the Voting Rights Act, uh, passed into law during um, Lyndon Johnson administration. It allowed um, more participation from minorities. Previously, uh, they have been uh, discriminated by in various forms. Uh, when you like move from state to state in the United States, uh, you have a chance to uh, um, register in other states, and you can do it by, let's say, um, uh, during DMV, or um, you can do it in some states, you can do it by mail. So whenever you move, make sure you register in your state to vote. Uh, the general idea behind election laws is to protect uh, integrity of elections, to make sure everybody has a chance to participate, um, records are proper, maintained, and stuff like this. Uh, some politicians have been very effective in uh, getting people uh, to register to vote. For instance, uh, Stacey Abrams in Georgia, uh, she basically made uh, Georgia not so red as it used to be. Before Civil Rights Act, um, uh, minorities have been discriminated in the United States by various means. Uh, one of, couple of examples, um, uh, poll taxes, obviously, if you are like, less wealthy, uh, those like taxes at the polling station uh, could be like prohibitive for you or uh, literacy tests. Again, uh, minorities uh, uh, like level of literacy was different back then. So this uh, Voting uh, Rights Act, it eliminated discrimination uh, uh, based on, on those, uh, those uh, things. Again, everybody um, is eligible to um, get registered as a voter starting at 18 uh, years old. But the thing is, um, each state uh, has its own procedures on how people register. And uh, this is uh, their like, um, important responsibilities. Uh, from time to time, federal government passed a bunch of laws um, trying to make sure that uh, the process of registration is accessible uh, to everyone. For instance, uh, Help America Vote Act uh, requires states to like, keep uh, proper records and uh, notify uh, uh, constituents if they're about to remove uh, from uh, voter rolls. But again, uh, federal government is kind of limited in this regard. There are some common restrictions on uh, who can uh, who can vote. For instance, uh, people in prisons or people with uh, felony convictions uh, in some states are not uh, eligible to vote. Um, people who cannot, and some technical stuff, people who cannot provide proof of their residency in a particular state. Uh, there are some things which are usually uh, used in uh, red states to prevent minorities from voting. And one of uh, those things uh, is a uh, um, some states require a specific um, form of photo ID uh, for you to be able to vote. And it usually disproportionately affects uh, minorities in, in this country. Again, um, uh, voting registration process uh, is different from one state to another. So whenever you move, make sure you um make sure you uh, follow those uh, procedures but again some states are allow online registration some require for you to register only in person and there are some uh, states which allow registration even by mail uh important uh, concept in this uh, week's topic uh, vote turnout the show of people uh, who actually showed up uh, compared to share people who are eligible to vote and usually in presidential elections, uh, uh, voter turnout is higher than in like midterm elections. 
Uh, thing about um, voting participation by different age groups, as you can see, um, younger people are usually less active uh, voters uh, than uh, older people. Uh, <clears throat> there are a bunch of uh, factors uh, people say influence uh, why some people vote more frequently than others. Again, uh, moving. If you move from state to state uh, frequently, you may be like behind on your registration. Uh, level of education. Uh, people with uh, higher levels of education, uh, they understand and they follow politics more. So they, they know that their vote uh, actually matters. And the reason for that, uh, politicians, uh, they try to study, they hire like posters to figure out who is likely to vote uh, in the place uh, where they are for office. So they try to like uh, change the math message uh, in accordance with the likelihood voter who will vote. Uh, then they will try to uh, raise issues which are important for people who are likely to vote. If uh, politicians know that certain demographics uh, like don't show up uh, frequently, they just uh, won't care about the, uh, their interests. And um, Generally speaking, uh, uh, white people participate in elections more frequently than uh, minorities. Uh, some of the reasons people mentioned when they asked uh, why they didn't vote, uh, like busy schedules, uh, uh, American thing, uh, childcare in the United States, uh, there is no federal government program on childcare. So uh, this sometimes could be a reason why a person cannot like show up to vote. Uh, lack of transportation in many cases. Uh, people don't know where the precinct is, uh, stuff like this. Yeah, and restrictive uh, voter laws, uh, like identification requirements in red states. Uh, general election cycle in this country, parties uh, nominate their candidates. They have uh, primary campaigns, uh, then um, uh, primaries and caucuses actually happen. Uh, parties uh, nominate their candidates at conventions. There is a general election campaign, uh, actual general election day. Uh, and uh, those previous steps uh, exist for like most offices, most large offices. Uh, like governors uh, or like um, state legislatures. Uh, electoral college is only for presidents. This is where electors uh, cast their ballots for president. Thing about America in this country, uh, men are more likely to seek public office than women. It's not universal. For instance, in uh, Scandinavian countries, they have lots of uh, female politicians. Uh, in this country, more white people seek electoral office than uh, minorities and education. The more educated you are, the more likely you are going to um, uh, seek uh, public office. There are two kinds of uh, primaries uh, in this country, close primaries. This is a situation where you have to indicate uh, who you are when you register to vote and you can uh, vote only in that particular party primaries. In open primary states, uh, uh, you can like choose uh, for which party to vote in which like primary to vote. And caucuses are usually in, in small, in small, less populated um, states like Iowa, uh, where like um, small groups of party activists uh, decide who will be the party nominee. So in this country, there is no like direct election of a president. In this country, electoral college uh, votes for president, and there are. Um, 538 uh, electors and uh, each state, um, the way like each state has a certain number of electors, uh, two senators plus um, uh, people in the house, congressional delegation of that state in the house of representatives. Uh, this, is, uh, this is what determines number of electors from a particular state. And you need 270 
to become president of this country. So again, uh, there is no direct election of president in the United States. Thing is, uh, in most states, like 80, uh, uh, with uh, 48, um, uh, winner takes all. If even by a single vote, a particular candidate like has more votes than the other candidate, uh, all electors from that state uh, will vote for that candidate uh, during uh, electoral college vote. Uh, there are a uh, couple of exceptions. In Nebraska and Maine, uh, they have kind of proportionate system. Um, in, in that system, uh, um, um, a, a candidate for majority um, gets two, um, two, um, uh, two electors uh, from uh, like Senate delegation. Uh, but uh, if someone came second in uh, Maine or Nebraska, that person uh, gets uh, one vote, uh, one uh, one vote um, uh, from like a House delegation. And this is what happened in two thousand eight. Uh, Barack Obama won uh, uh, one Nebraska district, uh, which was uh, like a rural, um, uh, urban and democratic. And Nebraska is kind of, I guess, uh, red state. And two thousand eighteen. Um, Uh, 16, sorry, uh, Trump uh, won a uh, uh, rural district in Maine, and Maine, I guess, is more like kind of blue state. Um, so uh, in a couple of states, uh, they have a, a proportional system of uh, distributing electors. In all other states, again, if a particular candidate uh, gets just one more vote than the other candidate, that candidate gets all um, electoral college votes from uh, that state. And imagine, for instance, if you are a Democrat in uh, Philadelphia and just by one uh, vote, uh, a Republican wins and uh, all, um, all, uh, all electoral college votes from, um, from Pennsylvania goes to that candidate and, and you're a Democrat in Philadelphia and vice versa. Imagine if a Republican in uh, rural uh, Pennsylvania and by just by one vote, a Democrat wins more and uh, all electoral college votes uh, from Pennsylvania go for Democrat. And you are like a Republican in rural um, uh, Pennsylvania. So this is how this system is kind of unfair. It doesn't um, correctly show uh, who won what. And in a couple of instances uh, recently, um, in 2000, uh, in 2000 um, based on popular vote, uh, Al Gore should be president. But since uh, uh, we have electoral college in this country, uh, despite uh, Al Gore having more uh, popular votes, he had more electoral college votes. And this is why George W. Bush became pre president. And the same thing happened in uh, 16. Uh, Trump got more electoral college votes then Clinton and he became president, but in terms of popular vote, uh, more people voted for Hillary Clinton. Uh, there are um, some like uh, the ideas uh, what can be done about electoral college. Uh, one idea would be abolish it, uh, but uh, simple like termination of electoral college since uh, it's mentioned in constitution uh, would require constitutional amendment which are like really really hard to uh, get rid of uh, get pro processed and approved so constitution constitutional amendments don't happen very often in the united states um, another way is a national popular ballot uh, initiative let's see if i can make it work here yep so this is uh, the uh, pact uh, between state among states uh, who say once uh, we have uh, states which have uh, 270, uh, what we will do at that point, uh, we will um, uh, distribute uh, our electoral college votes in accordance with a popular vote. So you can like uh, go here uh, and see uh, what what's like status in in your state? For instance, you live in uh, Pennsylvania, 
And you can see Pennsylvania does not have, uh, didn't uh, join this uh, pact yet. Uh, let's see, if you live in New Jersey. Yeah, New Jersey also doesn't have, but uh, doesn't uh, join that pact. So you can check, uh, well, let's see, maybe... Ah, actually, yeah, for instance, in Mass uh, state of Massachusetts has already joined uh, this pact. So uh, th th this is important. Uh, if you want to um, do something about Electoral College, uh, uh, take action and uh, do something about it. And the way would be contact your state legislature since um, it's a state level issue. Uh, states uh, could pass um, uh, pass laws uh, joining uh, that uh, national popular ballot initiative. Uh, campaign uh, finances. So um, um, in the 70s, a Federal Election Commission uh, was created uh, to make sure that um, uh, candidates uh, maintain proper records uh, uh, of uh, donations, that uh, there have been some uh, limits on donations to uh, political candidates. Uh, but what uh, happened um, later, uh, Supreme Court in a Citizens United uh, decision uh, basically created a huge uh, loophole in federal uh, election laws in terms of um, uh, limits on donations. Uh, for instance, in many cases, um, when you see an uh, ad, uh, from a politician, uh, when you see some ad, and in the end, you will see that uh, uh, this message is approved by candidate X for that particular office. So that ad was paid uh, through a political action committee, uh, which is regulated by Federal Election Commission. And there are uh, limits on individual donations. And the idea be behind limits on donations that Nobody can donate uh, too much money to have too much influence on a politician. But since uh, this uh, Citizens United uh, case, um, uh, so-called uh, super uh, PAC, PACs have been created, uh, super political action committees, uh, and they uh, can take uh, unlimited amount of money, uh, no limits on donations, and uh, donors uh, will are anonymous in those cases. This is a small caveat um, ad uh, generated by super PACs. Uh, they are supposed to like not coordinate with candidates. Um, so in this case, uh, the way they like go around this um, uh, this um, regulation, uh, they uh, just um, promote a particular view on a particular public policy issue. Like for instance. If you see an ad from Super PAC, which which is saying like we need to um, we support Second Amendment, we oppose um, ban on uh, assault weapons, for instance, uh, you would probably could guess that this and they don't mention a, a particular candidate for a particular office, but you do know that uh, in your district or in your state. Uh, usually Republicans uh, oppose uh, bans on assault weapons and Democrats usually support uh, bans on assault weapons, uh, stuff like this. So uh, ads uh, without uh, mention, uh, which don't mention a particular politician, uh, in most cases, they're generated by those uh, super PACs, super political action committees. So uh, when you ever see something like that, I would be like cautious, uh, like you have to know uh, who is like, uh, which side is playing for a particular ad. And direct democracy. Uh, so uh, some states um, um, allow people to directly pass uh, particular like public policy issues. Well, here on this map, you can see that um, uh, in most states, which are like kind of, kind of green, uh, they uh, they do have um, uh, those like ballots. When uh, when you go to uh, polling booth on your ballot, you would see something like, uh, "Should we uh, legalize recreational marijuana in our state?" So it's usually like uh, uh, 
kind of simple uh, public policy issues uh, where you can say uh, yes or no. Uh, complicated um, reforms are not passed by by those uh, initiatives, but uh, simple things uh, sometimes are done uh, this way in some states. And you, uh, you see in like kind of registered states here, uh, they're not like red states. Uh, New York is not a red state, but uh, at least in this map, uh, these uh, states uh, do not have um, uh, chances for direct democracy for uh, their residents. Uh, thank you very much.